Hey guys, so after I created the video on the ultimate guide to rolling cover calls and the video on how to sell cover call for income, I've been getting a number of questions regarding concerns and worries that your cover calls are getting assigned. So I decided to create this video for you guys on how to select cover call strikes that don't get assigned. And by that, I mean to select strikes that have the lowest chance of getting assigned. So in this video, I'll be sharing with you five methods to select strikes that have a very low probability of getting assigned. So the first method is to choose strikes with low deltas. Now, if you don't already know, Delta is the measuring of the rate of change in an option's theoretical value per dollar change in the underlying security. So this is the definition. But for the purpose of a cover call, we're not going to look at it because it's not that important. Instead, what we want to know is that Delta is also used as a gauge of the percentage chance that the option will be in the money at expiration. So I want you to take a look at the uh, option chain here. So on the left hand side, you can see these are all the call options. So this is the column that is showing the probability of uh, the strike, all right, the option being in the money at expiration. And on the right hand side, this is the delta. So you can see that it is actually very similar. So this has a delta of 66. So it roughly have a 62% chance that this strike, 132, would be in the money at the expiration date of 5th August 22. So down here is 50 delta, so that roughly should have 50% chance. So as you can see, it's very close. And all the way down to 3 delta. So 3 deltas roughly have 2%. Now, if you were to pull this up in your brokerage software, you could just bring up the probability of in the money. All right? But if your brokerage software does not have this, a quick way would be just to look at Delta because it's very, very similar. So you can see that on the right hand side, this is the stock of IBM. Right now, the stock price is around $137.62. So if you want to select a stock price that have a roughly 10% chance of being in the money, right? that means you're looking for the delta of 10 which is roughly around here so the closest that we have here is eight deltas so eight deltas that is a strike of 155 so that would be selling a cover call at 155 strike now if you are thinking of getting more premium then you would want to be selling the higher deltas so deltas let's say 30 deltas so 30 deltas you notice that the premium is roughly in between $225 to $259, so it's roughly about $2.40, so you get about $240 for selling the 144 strike. But the problem with that is that it is pretty near where the current price is, so that means there is a much higher chance of you getting a sign, and I'm sure this is one of the problems that many of you guys are facing when you're selling a cover call. You're not sure, you know, should you be selling a nearer strike but getting more premium, or should you be selling a further way strike so that you get a lesser chance of getting a sign? But, you know, the premium is quite minuscule. Like, for example, if you were to sell the 155 strikes, you only get about $42.00. Yeah, that's that's not a lot compared to getting, you know, $240 with the 144 strike. So there is a trade-off here. And if you want to ensure that your strikes, that your cover call do not get assigned, then what you want to do is select uh, the cover call strikes that have a low delta. And by low delta, uh Generally, it's 10 to 15 delta. So basically, it has 10 to 15 percent uh, probability of in the money. So if your priority is to not get assigned, but at the same time, you want to uh, still get some money at the side while holding on to the stock for the long term, then 10 to 15 deltas is a really good place for you to sell cover call strike. Now, of course, if you are a little bit more aggressive, you know, you feel that the stock for some reason is not going to go past that strike price of say 25 deltas or 30 deltas you can go for it but most of the time right or rather 25 to 30 percent of the time it will go in the money and that means there's a chance of you being assigned so if we want to go for 
the deltas that have a very low chance or rather the strikes that have a very low chance of getting assigned in the money at expiration then we want to go for these two strikes which is the $150 strike and the $155 strike so it's up here so as you can see it's much further away than the 30 delta strike which is 144 so ideally what we want to do is choose the strike that is as far as we can get but still give us some premium and preferably we want it to be above some sort of resistance so as you can see around 145 the price has bounced off touched it once come back down touched it and then come back down so 145 is roughly a resistance and that is the second method to choosing cover call strikes that don't, uh, don't get assigned and that is to choose strikes that's above resistance so resistance is basically where price have trouble going up so if we take a look at this chart of the QQQs can you identify where are the places that have a possible resistance so if you have identified somewhere around here which is above the 400 you're right as you can see price have tried to go break above this price many times but each time it goes up it comes back down goes up comes back down goes up comes back down so we know this is a pretty strong resistance point so if price was to get up somewhere to around 380 and then you have a chance to sell the cover call you want to sell one that is above this resistance so that there is a good chance that the price will not go past this price uh, this level at expiration okay the next level is at around 370 as you can see price bounced off here come back down go back up to the price level again hit resistance come back down and another place down here another resistance go up to this price cannot break above consolidates come back down go back up come back down so the price is slowly gradually making its way back up again so let's say for example you do have a position in QQQs then a good place for you to sell the cover call strike would be above this level especially you can see that this is a moving average so another form of resistance is a dynamic resistance so dynamic resistance comes in in the form of uh, moving averages so moving averages can serve as a resistance a lot of the time as you can see down here the price also came up here close to the moving average and then it comes back down so you can use this as a way for you to determine where you can sell your cover call a strike so if you can sell one that is above the resistance then it gives you a, a much better chance that your strike your cover call is not going to get assigned now you might be asking what if you know the resistance is still quite far away and if i were to sell a strike let's say at 320 dollars I won't be getting any premium well if that's the case then you don't want to sell a cover call right now you just want to wait until the price goes back up slightly higher maybe around 300 305 then you can consider selling a cover call above this resistance so again here can you find out where the resistance is all right so it's pretty obvious there are two resistance levels here all right one is 177 dollars 50 cents another one is down here so as you can see price is approaching resistance and the price has moved up uh, pretty pretty uh, continuously without uh, having any sort of a big retracement back down so there is a good chance that if price were to hit this level it could come back down afterwards so if you are along this uh, stock which is pepsi you could sell a cover call above you know 172.5 or above 177.5 all right so the third method would be to only sell the cover call when the stock is overbought and when i mean overbought basically it means uh, looking at uh, the indicator so in this case i have the stochastic oscillator it it tracks the whether the market is overbought or oversold by these two lines there are other indicators as well such as the rsi so it comes down to your own personal preference for me i like to use the, the slow stochastics in this case and as you can see a lot of times when the market is overbought it tends to reverse back down now of course it doesn't work all the time but at least it's much better than if you were to say sell a cover call when the market is oversold because when the market is oversold there is a good chance that there will be a bounce back up 
right? And if you're selling a cover call, you do not want to sell your cover call when the market is oversold. So having this as an indicator of when you should be selling your cover call does actually help. So if you were to take a look at this chart, there are a number of times that when the market is overbought, it comes back down. So you can see on the left hand side, if it's overbought, when it's overbought, the market comes back down. And at the time the market goes up, shows an overbought signal and it retraces back down again. And then another time when it's overbought, comes back down. So as you can see, there are a number of instances where there is uh, where the market is overbought. And in this case, you can see that every time the market is overbought, it comes back down. So it does help that when the market is overbought, you can sell a cover call strike and then it immediately comes back down for you to take profit on the cover call, right? So if let's say you sold a cover call for a dollar at a uh, expiration date of 30 days away, right? And if the market was to drop immediately, like right now, uh, uh, in this instance down here, and your cover call is showing a profit of 50%, that means the a dollar becomes 50 cents and it's just only like a week in, you can actually choose to close your cover call because you've already made 50% of the profit in seven days. So it doesn't really make sense for you to hold another 23 days just to realize the other 50%. This way you are risking your chance, you know, you're risking your cover call uh, getting uh, in the money or getting exercise if somehow there is going to be a rally. So if you see that there is a 50% profit uh, somewhere before the 50% 50, uh, 50 of the expiration date is left, so if 30 days expiration date, less than 15 days, you get 50% profit, then it's perfectly fine to take profit on it. So it is a very good way for you to identify when to sell the cover call. Now the fourth method is to avoid earnings when you want to sell covered calls. And the reason is that earnings can really make the price move. There's going to be huge movements if the announcement, the earnings come out is not as expected and that can cause the price to gap up or gap down. So while earnings can actually give you a juicier premium because of the increased volatility, there's going to be a huge movement. Now if it's a gap down, of course, it'll be good for your cover call but not so good for your underlying stock. But if there's a gap up, then there's a good chance or maybe a, a, a strong high probability that your cover call will be in the money. And if you don't want that to happen, then you do not want to sell any cover calls going into earnings. And by that, I mean to avoid selling any cover call that expires after the earnings is announced. So for example, if they're going to announce the earnings on the, let's say the 30th of uh, June, you do not want to buy a cover call, or sorry, you do not want to sell a cover call past that date. Rather, you want a cover call that expires before the earnings. So you do not uh, trade this, you do not get the cover call into earnings. So if you take a look at this stock, IBM, you can see that whenever there's earnings, there's quite a big price movement. In this case, there's a big candle going up. And for this, you can see there's a gap up. So if you want to avoid all this, especially if you do not want to have your stock called away, then it's much better for you to just avoid selling your cover calls when the stock that you're in is, is about to announce earnings. So again, another stock, this is CRM. As you can see during the earnings announcement, there is a huge gap up as well. So here's a better way to do it. Rather than enter a cover call before the earnings, what you could do is actually sell the cover calls after the earnings is announced if there is a gap up. Because a lot of the times uh, when there is a gap up, a lot of people will want to take profit at that point in time. right? So that is why you can see there is a sell down. There's a saying that you know the stock wants to close the gap. All right? it, it doesn't happen all the time, but a lot of times it does. So in this case, you can see there's a gap here. And subsequently, after the earnings an announcement, the price goes up and then after that, it comes back down to fill up the gap before going back up again. So if the earnings announcement is a good surprise for some reason and the stock starts to rally, what you could do is at this point, 
you could actually sell a cover call somewhere up here. So yeah, 200, 205, 210, depending how much premium you can get. And also, of course, if there is a resistance above this, it's a good place for you to sell your cover call as well. So the key thing here is to avoid going into earnings, avoid selling a cover call into earnings. Now, the fifth method is more of a protection because you could sell you know, the cover calls based on the four methods which I just shared with you earlier. But for some reason, there's a very strong move in the stock and it does, reaches you, uh, does reach your strike price. So at this point of time, to avoid the chance of it actually being a sign, you want to roll the cover call when the delta is 50 and that means the, the stock reaches your strike price. So the moment the stock goes up to your strike price, you start to roll. All right, and the, and the roll you want to do is out and up. And that means to roll to a further expiration date and to roll it to a higher strike price. So you can see this example. Let's say that you have a cover call initially at the 150 strike price. So what happens is that IBM probably went all the way up, touches 150. At this point of time, you want to roll. That means you buy back the 150 and then you sell the following month or any other expiration date that is later than 15 October and you want to sell the higher strike price as well in this case you can see it's 155 this way you have a, a lesser chance of it being in the money at expiration date so I want to give you a visual illustration of what you actually should be doing uh, if you do not want to have your, your cover call be in the money so what you're going to do basically is you're going to keep, just keep perpetually rolling your cover calls uh, whenever the price has reached your strike price. So uh, if you can see here, the stock is, imagine the stock is at this price. So you will be selling your cover call above, uh, above here. And then if the stock goes up to your cover call, what you do is you roll it up and then you wait for the stock to move again and if it goes back up again to your strike price you're going to roll it up again and if it goes up again to your cover call you're going to roll it again so you will be rolling this over and over again and this is the best way that you can avoid having an in the money cover call having it assigned an expiration if you already have a cover call right so you might be wondering how far can you roll out well the thing is that you can keep rolling out all the way until the furthest expiration date until it becomes a leap right so you could be starting off with a 30-day cover call but if the price just keeps on rallying and it's a very strong move upwards then you're going to keep rolling it from 30 days to 60 days to 90 days 180 days you could even be rolling to 300 over days until a year plus so that is the downside right at least you do not get assigned you will have less chance of getting assigned and because when the, the, the stock or rather when the cover call has an expiration date of 300 plus or when it's ridiculous amount right maybe a year or more chances are you won't get exercise because nobody wants to exercise it until it's close to the expiration date so you keep doing this until either A, you can't roll out anymore and that is the maximum uh, date of expiration that the, your brokerage has provided for you. That's the furthest that you can roll to. Or once it's all the way in the money already at that point and you cannot roll for more credit, then you have no choice then for it to be assigned. Otherwise, this is your best chance or the best way that you do not get your cover call strike assigned. And if you want, and anyway, because you are already holding the stock, you want the stock to hold for long term. So it shouldn't bother you that much that your cover call is also that long, right? Because you want to hold the stock for a long time and you do not want to have your stock called away. All right, so let's put it all together. So for the lowest chance of having your cover call assigned, here's how you should select your strike. First, you want to select the strike with low deltas, which is 10 to 15 deltas. Ideally, you want all this together. All right, so with low deltas, and then it is also above a resistance area, and the, the indicator which you're using 
stochastic or RSI is saying that the stock is overbought and the the stock is not having any earnings announcement right if you have all this four then you should quick, you should go ahead and sell the cover call because there is a very good chance that the the cover call will expire worthless right and finally, you want to roll when the price reaches to your strike of 50 delta. So the key here is to be very selective with your cover call uh, strikes when you want, if you want to sell a cover call. Be very selective. That means you won't be selling all the time. You won't be thinking of, you know, I want to fix number a thousand dollars or two thousand dollars every month by selling cover call you need to throw that out of the window and not have that mindset because if you do not want your cover calls to be assigned then you cannot just force a cover call each time you only can sell a cover call if the market moves in a way where you get these four criteria right so the upside of this is that you get to keep your stock although you do not get to sell as many cover calls as there is you at least get to keep the stock which is what you wanted in the first place all right so i hope this video has been very helpful for you and now that you have a be much better idea of uh, choosing cover call strikes so that you have a lesser chance of getting assigned so if you like this video has been very helpful for you please click the uh, thumbs up button and also please subscribe to have more videos like this so I can create more of these videos for you. Alright, thank you and I'll see you in the next video.